Good morning everyone. Today we have gathered to dissect and understand the findings of the war game conducted by Incitation Consultings on the corporatization of Ordnance Factory Board. And we have the pleasure of having here with us the results from the horse's mouth, former chairman of OFB, Mr. Saurabh Kumar, who was also a participant in this war game get some insights on results of war game corporatization of OFP. And needless to say, we have our editor, Mrs. Sangeeta Saxena, no introductions needed for our audience. So ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, sitting with us today. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much, Etali. And uh, sir, most welcome. It's wonderful, you know, because we've been tracking this war game for now a month plus. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were very excited. We wanted to know what the findings would be. And sir, since you were a part of the event, a part of the team, and also former chairman Ordnance Factory Board, the results are surprising. And quite surprising for that matter. So uh, I'd like to begin with uh, by asking you as to why the surprise element in the result from the expected? Uh, well, what are the surprise elements according to you? Sir, what has surprised you in the results? Prices in short term would have gone down normally, wouldn't they? But uh, now suddenly we realize that prices in short term will shoot up. So what's by that? You see, prices have to shoot up. Uh, actually, it should have been anticipated, number one. Ordnance factories uh, were in the government setup and they were supplying things to armed forces on no cost, no profit basis. Because all their requirements of capital, money for modernization, money for R&D, etc. was being catered for by the government through the budget. Now that has to be catered for by the respective corporations. So from where they would get the money, the working capital requirement the money required for uh, modernization, which is an ongoing process for maintenance of infrastructure, the money for uh, some uh, pretty good size R&D projects they are having in different corporations. And uh, every corporation has to build up some corpus ultimately to uh, sustain itself. So immediately the efficiencies will not be put in immediately. It will take some time to uh, bring them in the processes. So the initial reaction would be to uh, increase the prices. Okay. And uh, in that case, if the prices go beyond, uh, you know, our exports, uh, uh, the export partners' prices, then would it be easier for us to just import them? No, you see, for many of the things, uh, our prices are much less than the imported products for many of the items. I will not say all of the items, but for many of the items. We were not exporting them because there was a thrust on exports, which has come only in the last few years. And there are other, uh, uh, you can say you have to build up your brand and markets for that. But uh, the most of the products, the, our prices are... Uh, not uh, expensive than import prices. So that should not be a thing. And for secondly, the prices will not go uh, very high. So that uh, that uh, price competitiveness, in any case, the corporations have to maintain. If, if they are not able to maintain, then obviously the, there'll be pressure for imports always. Okay. So there's another point which uh, came up in the findings was that uh, the manufacturer of uh, manufacturing of certain items will become non-viable. So, I mean, why? Financially non-viable. So then, which means that we already have a list of indigenous production uh, with OFP. Now, suddenly they also do not remain indigenous if you uh, can't manufacture them. Then the option remains that we go buy them. You see, the, one has to understand the nature of defense business. We have uh, pointed out for those items where the demand is not regular. There are many items, uh, especially ammunition items, for which the demand is not very regular from, from the army. 
it it happens that it come for a few years then there is a lull for many uh, long years then there it comes back again now in the government setup the capacities are maintained because people are there who get uh, paid their wages the plants are maintained the investments are for at least maintaining the plants are being done to ensure that the things are in working condition in a corporate environment when the orders are not regular it becomes expensive to maintain capacity and secondly in many of the cases now we are dependent on expo uh, on private vendors for this so it's very difficult if we, if we are dependent upon uh, private vendors and the orders are not there for uh, say four or five years they are not willing to uh, supply to us and when the supplies resume the prices go up so so or they are not willing to supply to us so so there is a discontinuity we we are facing this problem so i will not say or what i will rather precisely say is that when there is a discontinuity in orders or their orders are greatly reduce the production targets the our vendor base dries up and then it becomes difficult to revive it or upgrade it at the short notice which is the expectation from the army so another shocking uh, revelation we see from the findings is that OFP may stop manufacture of certain items which are financially unviable. Does this mean that the Indian defense industrial base will lose the capability to manufacture items already indigenized, or will the stability of demand take will take care of this? Yeah, you see uh, what uh, they meant uh, from financially unviable was. the same thing which i covered in the previous question that is the demand is not regular it comes in spurts so it is very difficult to maintain capacities mm -hmm. and if we have to then produce it then the prices go up pretty high we are not used to offering something to armed forces at 30 or 40% higher prices but then after 4 years if we start production after 5 years or so but then it will be a reality it may become a reality because uh, we will not be able to sustain those capacities number one and if it is very very difficult then uh, manpower shortages etc may start impacting the production a few years down the line okay because uh, the corporations uh, will be under pressure to uh, be financially viable and the uh, manpower reduction will be of course uh, production workers may not uh, get reduced but manpower will be manpower will be getting reduced and uh, the vendor base the biggest problem is the vendor base which uh, will not be willing to supply us the components after a gap of 4 5 years mm -hmm. so i will not say that it is uh, it will not be produced but it will be produced it will be require huge efforts to start it it will take time and it will take money also it may not be so easy as it was in the government setup because the costs were uh, there taken care of by the government uh sir uh, i just wanted to ask you one thing which is uh, which was a main aim with i cit on consulting planned this war game they had in mind that you know corporatization will begin you know increase the surge capacity and suddenly our findings say that it's not going to be so so uh, i mean why so ma'am uh, we must understand the what is the nature of surge capacity surge capacity is something which we keep in our reserves so that once in 10 years once in 20 years if there is a sudden peak demand for that item we are able to produce it like the situation came at kargil or like when there was a problem you know about the pulwama yuri and and we have to be ready for that for those occasions which may arise once in 10 years otherwise these capacities are idle because the experience has been that the especially for the ammunition the requirement of the forces multiply many times during that period which is uh, not there during the peace time now how do we maintain those capacities number one those capacities require that our plants should have more capacity to produce than our regular requirement that means we are in built excess manufacturing capacity there for certain case of ammunition similarly the manpower has to be there because ammunition manufacturing i can't bring just contract labor and start uh, production it's a, it's a very specialized job even the handling and transportation storage at every stage so those people have to be there it, it's a surge capacity is like an insurance premium 
I have to keep paying that for maintaining it, and it requires huge money. So it has to be compensated. If the new corporations are expected to maintain such capacity, then they will come back to the government and to the army that look, this requires that I keep on having 400 people in this factory who may not be required for my regular production and target the army is giving. Or this plant of excess capacity, I have to keep on maintaining it. It requires so much money at least to maintain it properly, to keep on modernizing it. So that way, that money, who will pay? Who will pay that money? So I think that the best uh, solution in this case could be that if you want to keep the search capacity intact, then increase the export market so that nothing is lying idle and you're busy. You see, Madam, uh, export, it is it is something that uh, if I am I have blocked my capacity in export, immediately in case of requirement, I just say no to them. And I cannot divert that capacity for in-house manufacturing. It, it is not possible for the type of products we are making. It is, it is simply not possible. Uh, there are other commitments. And uh, idle capacities, if we are totally export-focused organization, if we are by nature that, then it can be possible. But traditionally, ordnance factories had been there the, keeping the capacities for our uh, Indian armed forces. So it will not be wise that we sacrifice that capacity and uh, block that capacity by fully exporting for exports. Of course, the aim will always be to keep on exporting, but it may not be possible always. It may not be possible but the always. Uh, uh, right, sir, but the government in this case you know, has brought out a clarity, very clear point that all the new corporates will have to export at least 25%. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that also needs a certain amount of planning. And so, so uh, how do you think uh, your war game came out with something on that, those lines, some solution on those lines? Yeah, definitely it, it, it will be a very challenging task because uh, traditionally ordnance factories had been focused on our uh, domestic market only. Now for the last uh, three, four years, we have been getting uh, some uh, success in export of ammunition. So ammunition exports, I think we can uh, get uh, some more traction. Anything uh, uh, sustained efforts would be required. Entering into new markets and some customization of existing products and bringing no more product for export, that is there. But export is not possible for many. So, say for example, the armor, the vehicles, give. the armored vehicle, whatever we are producing, is under license. And they are under... Uh, the license regime, the restrictions for exports are there. So it has to be for facilitating exports of those items. The government has to intervene and talk to the uh, governments of the countries which have provided the technology to uh, okay. develop some, evolve some arrangement for exports. Right. And, uh, sir, there's one other finding which is uh, you know, surprising and also very a little sad when you think about it, if it actually happens, that the ancillaries and the auto-electronics business uh, might not uh, just function. So, I mean, what is what is this finding? Why do you actually, feel that? Why does the... It is, uh, I, 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 I tell you the reason. It was actually, they will be facing a lot of competitive challenges. Actually, that is the reality. From, from the private industry? From the private sector, from the PSU in case of optoelectronics. Now, the challenges are that till now there was a configuration they were producing. We have got the technology. And we were not allowed to go to anywhere else. Just product upgradation like that was not possible. So now these corporations will have to search for new technologies of their own offer to army and if required uh, through foreign collaborations mostly and we'll have to uh, offer uh, to the army in the as a form of product development and product upgrade now as long as they were in the government they were it was not possible for them to do that so in the sense that uh, if a new technology product is there somebody may say okay i have a better product than this one so allow me to put that in the tank and army may say okay we want a better product so if there is a better site or something is available, it should be used. We have suggested that initially there should be a period of handholding for that. 
so that uh, these corporations say uh, optel uh, may get time to reorient themselves with the new environment and make up systems to face new challenges similarly for the ancillary that is the yantra limited which is called you see their uh, the nature of product is that for some of the things the requirement is massive for example the bullet so suppose the jo aap goli bolte hain uska cartridge cases and all that we produce 150 millions per year so it is not possible for a vendor to come and produce 150 millions per year the like small arms business if he produces 4 5 8 millions we will not buy from them because we don't want to take a small quantity from a vendor and do that so many cases there are dedicated capacities big capacities we have mastered those products and it is not possible it will not be viable for a private vendor to enter simply because he will not have the volumes so those areas will be protected but there may be many areas where the entry barriers may be low and there of course uh, uh, there will be a pressure uh, for them to compete with the uh, market because they are no longer part of the same organization the customer is the ammunition uh, which will be buying from them so there uh, can, there will be a competition for some of the factories and that they have to upgrade okay so just for the knowledge of our audience you know since you have been the chairman of ofp how does it you know i it's not a part of your war game but then you know i just wanted to understand will it also change the status when you have seven small companies then it also changes the status and the work profile heavily and what happens you know in such a case because uh, till now we knew that oh any requirement goes to ofp now you are now everybody will try the three forces the paramilitaries for their requirement will try you know okay, how do we do it how do we interact with so many people what is our requirement okay so it's easier to go to russians and buy it from there okay it's easier to go to americans and buy it from there so doesn't that become a little problematic having seven different entities uh, from one good big entity you it will be problem for the customers it will be problem That's for what? the customer because because uh, ma'am we were supplying the weapons we were supplying the ammunition so if there is any quality problem or anything it is it is the ofb which is responsible for that now being split and even within the munitions if you see the hardware comes from a different organization now so even if the order is placed on munitions say by the army and mha then they have to go through a very elaborate process for sourcing it from the ancillary previously it used to be an administrative order a uh, simply an intra factory demand and the things would come so that way our internal systems have become more will become more complicated no doubt about that and uh, uh, of course the customers will find it also a bit uh, bewildering because they will have to uh, contact with many people because they are buying say even mha they are buying weapons also they are buying ammunition also they are buying optical systems also so instead of contacting with one person or they will be contacting three persons in case of mind it will be like it will be fourth entity will they be dealing with three or four corporation right. instead of one so sir uh, you know deviating a little from this i wanted to understand one thing from you that at the moment as ofp what is the level of uh, in, uh, you know imports we are doing for uh, parts you know spare parts or parts uh, production manufacturing parts and once these entities become separate ofb becomes seven separate entities in that case what happens to this market which is there with the foreign countries uh you see it is better instead of giving you a gross figure i'll i'll give you figure uh, division by division say for ammunition ammunition our import was hardly 3% of the total turnover and most of the ammunition that we were producing 100% in business we don't require anything from any any foreign country for some of the ammunition where we had got the technology recently where the production was yet to be stabilized it was in those areas only we were uh, importing it imports were mostly in the armored vehicle area where it was about about i think 10 to 15% of the turnover was imports mostly from again uh, russia because uh, we were producing the c90 tanks and all under license weapons there is some import for dhanush because again those critical sub systems they are not available in india 
the the very sophisticated gun so even at the vendor development stage our vendors actually were importing and giving it so we they mean they are uh, not manufacturing it so we are taking export in the most generic sense that even if our vendor imports it and give it we are to be counted as imports so our vendors were importing and giving us but overall for the organization it is about 10 to 12% that's all okay so and that will not make a difference yeah sorry and that will not make a difference and uh, especially keeping in mind that there's a major expansion in the market and uh, indian market and indigenization under atmanirbhar bharat and make in india yeah. so you have a lot of indians making it so hopefully that will suffice the problem yeah yeah we, you see for example in hydraulic systems for dhanuj uh, the sophisticated valves the sophisticated motors Uh, i'm not sure who's going to take up manufacturing because they are big produced by big german companies so unless they come okay. in and start manufacturing it i doubt it will be produced so some of the things maybe that is the restriction electronics okay. mill standard components we don't get here it has to be imported okay yeah so uh, something will still remain from the imports so it doesn't yeah. become 100% uh, indigenized in that Hundred no, I'm saying most of the things become hundred percent indigenized. Most of the things. Okay. It is it, the imports is confined to a few platforms only. It is not uh, okay. across the board. That's what I said. That ammunition it is only three percent import, and there will be if we produce hundred twenty five type of ammunition, hundred and two hundred twenty hundred twenty five type of ammunition, maybe six or seven items we are importing something. and some of the imports is there because of economies of scale also the requirements are so less it is not viable to establish manufacture right absolutely so uh, sir uh, my next thing is i want to understand from you the concept uh, in cytion uh, consulting started the concept of a war game to discuss something like that which is a major decision i mean how did, what were the two days like how was it I mean, for us, you know, it was we were not a part of it, and we wa- actually wanted to get a feel of it. But then we were, uh, you know, not a part of it. We were not here, and we were covering the army 2021 in Moscow, both Chetali and I. And uh, mm-hmm. we really wanted to understand, you know, how did you, you know, brainstorm it? Was there a lot of vision, vision over it? And no, uh, no, you know, everybody. Okay, so <laughs> how was it? You know, how was for it? For God's sake, don't take it as a TV debate. <laughs> <laughs> it was not it was not it was not it was a it, it was not like that you see it was a very interesting concept for me i was also participating for the first time and when rajiv gave this offer uh, i was too excited and happy about it and thankful to him for that the they had explained to us the basic concept that there is a particular theme and this is what is going to be and there are there are people who are going to play the roles of all the stakeholders there was there was a group of people who were acting as ministry of defense as army as labor unions as honest factory board at private sector and all that and they had made a set of questions that okay this is the first question what is the response now the question is to me suppose for example the question you are asking about what will happen to optel if there is a competition then we gave a reply the reply goes to different people again it goes to army it goes to private sector it goes to different people they reply and raise different question and the mail came to us back that okay this is their observation now you reply so it used to happen that three four question three four questions are shuttling here and there for about one one and a half hours and once the issue is finalized then we meet on the video for about one and a half hours exchange our views and uh, that's all but it was very interesting because uh, you see pulare a very intelligent group of people each has its own perspective each have their own domain knowledge and uh, that is what uh, was very really exciting because uh, it gives us a new insight a new way to look at things so and it is always good that okay it's like a brownian motion if you understand that sign that yes. keeps on ideas yes. keep on shuttling from year to year and ultimately some of they find the uh, right direction and we were we were uh, pretty honest about it not that what anyone feel like or what whether anyone will like it or not so we gave our views without any uh, inhibition i think 
you know, we were very recently in Moscow and uh, Chetali interviewed the gentleman who was there, uh, the official was there at the India Pavilion. And uh, we've always been wanting to understand that, uh, you know, is OFB scared of this corporatization which is going to happen? Ah, it, it's, you are touching the raw nerve of people. <laughs> <laughs> You see, uh, I, I tell you very frankly, <clears throat> the, uh, you can say the nature of business of defense is that 95% of our orders come from Ministry of Defense or Ministry of Home Affairs. It is either of the two. It's 5% of our business is exports or some odd things in civil market. And we have seen that when there, were, there was no shortage of defense business, what Whatever we are projecting now, this 11,500 plus, say, some, a few percentage of, we are capable of delivering more than uh, about 20, 25% more than that also. It is this uncertainty which, which uh, keeps people on the hooks. If you are getting an order 17, 18,000 crore worth, say 3,000 crore from MHA and others, and 15,000 crore for army, people are very happy there their workload is there. So the all this thing that whether we will have workload, whether our uh, will not be viable or something will be gone. So cooptization and the psychological aspect was that people have joined it as a government department. Then they also used to see what happened to BSNL. That was actually a very uh, dark background that BSNL was in far more stronger shape than ordnance factories when it was corporatized. And look what has happened to BSNL. So people were also not finding many good stories outside of uh, success stories. And, and I, human mind is that they will compare it with the worst only. So, so BSNL was not a success and that was also a frightening thing. So these things made people a bit jittery about the whole thing. And they were, uh, there was a overhang that what if, what if, if we do not get orders, what if, if it doesn't become successful. So what ifs uh, continue, what ifs continue, they don't go anywhere. They will go back after a success story when they stabilize in four or five years, then what ifs will go back. Otherwise, they, it will continue. And we have to, in the, uh, in the war game, we have mentioned that, that I think is the biggest challenge that how to handle those what ifs. It is, uh, it is the really a human problem uh, which has to be tackled. And that is the most important thing in this whole exercise. It cannot be just the, dismissed. Yeah, it's a, and when the next time we speak again after a few months and the uh, corporatization has become a reality and it's set in, then I'm going to ask you the same question again. How do we solve? Are we somewhere near to solving these motives? So we'll <laughs> definitely have another session. Sir. Uh, and, uh, uh, yes. In a few months we can talk, we can talk, but uh, but maybe we'll see the real impact after a year only. After we'll see years. the real impact after a year only. We will be nice. we are free to talk. Yeah, but let let one year pass because then people will find their feet somewhere and then only it will we'll see what happens. Right. And sir, thank you very much. You know, and we also want to thank Insight uh, on Consultings for organizing this war game, you know, because it was it's such a brilliant idea and so nice to know that you can brainstorm and so many people, you know, you get to, it's a mass idea which comes forth. And we are very grateful to you, sir, for this session. And uh, any whenever we feel that we need something from the horse's mouth, sir, we'll get yeah. back to you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very thank much, you. sir. Thank, thank you, Chetani. Thank you for so me. much. Thank you so much, sir. It has been pretty yeah, intriguing for me as well thank to, you to you for listen to everything. Opportunity to <laughs> no, it, the pleasure was entirely ours, sir. And it was pretty intriguing to listen to everything as well as, um, mm. sorry for the glitches, but uh, it happens. It happens in India. No, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Tan, again. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. Thanks for both of you. Right. For your time. Okay. Thank right. you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thank you so okay. much, Tan. Bye. -bye.